All right, how you guys doing today? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you in one of our last chapters here in this geometry unit. Chapter 10 called Circles. Now, what we're going to do first is look at section 10.1, which is using properties of tangents, and really it's going to get into a ton of circle vocabulary, and that's going to be critical in this chapter. But let's take out a check, take a look at our funny joke. Squares and circles, or squares and triangles are going to agree that circles are pointless. He he he, funny, funny, funny guy. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of our vocabulary for this chapter. There's a lot of it. Check all this stuff out. So go ahead and hit pause and write all these down in your notes. You're going to have to know each one of these pieces. And in a moment, we'll get a chance to practice to see if you can recognize where each of these pieces are. Go ahead and hit pause, and then when you're done, come on back. All right, welcome back. Now, there is one thing I do want you to pay attention to in your diagrams down here. If you take a look down here in our circle that's on the right-hand side, we've got this point B right here. That point B, that's called your point of tangency, and that just means wherever your tangent line intersects the circle. So more on that later on. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our next section and where we actually practice identifying some of these pieces. So here, for example, number one, we've got to tell whether each one of these pieces is best described as a radius, chord, diameter, secant, or a tangent of our circle C. So let's take a look at our first piece here, AC. Well, from that spot to that spot, we can pretty clearly tell that that is going to be a radius. And that's all there is to it. Now for our next piece, we've got segment AB. So A is going to start here, and B is going to go, it's going to end right there. So we've got segment that is on where the endpoints are on the edge of the circle. And notice it goes through the center of the circle. Therefore, it is going to be called a diameter. Next, we've got ray DE. So that's going to start here and go all the way down this way. Now notice how many times does this touch this circle? It only touches one time and if that touches one time then that means you are going to have a tangent. Tangent touches the circle only once. And then we've got AE. So let's get rid of that. Now we're taking a look at from A to E. A goes there and E is all the way out here. Now notice this one touches a circle twice right here and up in there. So if you have a line that touches a circle two times, that is going to be called a secant. And extends beyond the circle. So since AE was given as a line, it's called a secant. Now say, instead of being presented with AE, say you were just presented with AG, but the symbol above it was this, then AG would just be considered a chord. Okay, but if you had AG like this and you had a line above it instead of just a segment symbol, then that would be considered a secant. So small little details here, but those details are important in identifying the different pieces. All right, so that's it for those two examples. Now next, we're going to play around with the idea of a tangent. And a tangent is going to be something very special about the way it intersects a circle. Now here in this diagram, we're told that PT is the radius of the circle. We want to know if ST is the tangent to the circle. So if ST is tangent to the circle, that's going to mean that where it intersects a circle is going to form a right angle. Now since it forms a right angle, from there, we're going to use some of our skills with the Pythagorean theorem to kind of test this to see if this triangle is a right, right triangle. Now what you have to do is identify which side is the hypotenuse. Well, everybody can see the largest number of all three of them, given for our triangle sides, is side SP. So that we're going to use as C. And then the other two pieces, ST and PT, those we'll use for our other two sides. So what we're going to do is use our Pythagorean theorem to check this. Now we'll take our time and we'll write everything out. So we're going to have 37 squared. And we're going to compare that to 12 squared plus 35 squared. Now if this is a right triangle, then the sum of the other two sides, 12 squared and 35 squared, will be equal to the hypotenuse squared. Doing the arithmetic, 
because that's all this piece is, and you'll probably need your calculator for this. 37 squared gives us 1369. 12 squared is 144, and 35 squared is 1225. Adding up the right-hand side, we end up with 1369. Now, since both of those values are the same, c squared, or 1369, and the sum of the a squared and b squared sides, that means that our triangle is a right triangle, which means then that st is going to be tangent to the circle, since triangle STP is a right triangle with a right angle at T. So make sure you write that sentence down as well, just to kind of justify your, your reasoning there on that. So that's all there is to working with that piece for tangent. You'll have to do this a lot in probably in your geometry class. Now the next thing we're going to take a look at is this idea of tangent as it relates to two circles. And in this case, it's going to be called a common tangent. A common tangent is just a line ray or segment that is tangent to two coplanar circles. And you can see from our diagrams here, we've got a couple of circles drawn. Now, one of the things that we're going to do is go ahead and draw as many as we can. So here's one that's shown right here in this one. We could also draw, now this is going to be the straightest line, but we could draw one that would touch each circle twice there. And then that would give us a second piece. Now we could also draw one that would go right here along the top of each one of them or along the bottom of them. So in total, this one on the left hand side, we would end up with four common tangents for that particular figure. Now on the right hand side, again, if we take a look and kind of play around with this a little, I mean, you can see you've got another one coming in there. So now we have two common tangents. We've got, we could do another one. It's kind of sloppy right here, but right there's a third one. And then coming down here, we would end up with another one. So again, since we've got four different common tangents for this one as well, just like the first one. Now in example number three, we just have to play around with those diagrams and see how many common tangents the circles have and draw them. So what I want you to do is hit pause, draw the common tangents you think you can find, and then go ahead and write down how many there are. When you're ready, go ahead and hit pause or unpause it and come on back. So how'd you guys do with that? Hopefully you came up with three common tangents for the first one, one common tangent for the middle one, and then two common tangents for the one on the right hand side. The one that's all the way on the left, sometimes people forget that middle one. So make sure that you see that and include that in your diagram there. Now we've got one other thing to do for the, our notes on this section. Here again, we're gonna be playing around with this idea of tangent. And it says RS is tangent to the circle C at S, and RT is tangent to the circle C at T. Find the value of X. Now, I like to call this picture kind of like an ice cream cone. Uh, sometimes people refer to it as a, as a hat if it's oriented a little bit differently. And one of the things you want to think about, if it's an ice cream cone, both of the sides of the cone are the same length. Or if you're thinking about it like as a hat, well, both of the, if you're wearing a hat that looks like that, then as it comes down to your head, it's going to intersect around where your ears are at the same exact space, which means those two pieces are going to be equal. So right here from R all the way to S, that part, and from R to T, both of those pieces are going to be the same thing. So that's going to allow us to write this equation, RS equals RT, and from there, it's just a simple matter of substitution and arithmetic and algebra from there. And you guys will be solid on this, but don't get lazy and just jump right into this piece, 28 equals 3x plus 4. Make sure that you write down the previous statement. From here, just take your time and do your arithmetic. When you're done, make sure that you go back and you answer the question. It said find the value of x. So the value of x is 8. And that's it on that one. We'd rock out and we'd be done with that. So that's all there is for this section, just getting to know a little bit of vocabulary here and working with tangents as they relate to the circle. You guys have a great day, and I'll catch up with you later. Peace out.